Top 10 Concepts Essential to Use Health Plan Wisely If you're new to health insurance there are basic concepts you must understand to avoid nasty financial surprises. If you don't understand these key concepts, you will be able to choose a health plan wisely or use your health insurance effectively. This video brought to you by Top 10 Best Facts channel, that will showcase all the best among the best facts about life and lifestyle, of all the amazing, unique, and the best of everything the world can offer. Videos posted every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. The health insurance in the United States, you'll find it's expensive. But cost isn't the only problem for beginners trying to get health insurance. It's also a complex system with multiple entry points. Since you can potentially get health insurance from many different sources, such as the government, from your job or university, or from a private insurance company, it's not always clear where you should start looking when shopping for low-cost health insurance. 1. Cost sharing, your health insurance company won't pay all of your covered healthcare expenses. You're responsible for paying part of your healthcare bills even when you have health insurance. This is known as cost sharing because you share the cost of your healthcare with your health insurance company. The three most common cost sharing mechanisms are deductibles, co-payments, and coinsurance. Some health plans use all three techniques, while others may only use one or two. If you don't understand your health plan's cost sharing requirements, you can't possibly know how much you'll have to pay for any given healthcare service they are offering. The deductible is what you have to pay each year before your health insurance coverage kicks in fully and begins to pay its share. For example, if you have a $1,000 deductible, you have to pay the first $1,000 of your healthcare bills, for services that count towards the deductible, as opposed to being covered by a copay, before your health insurance company starts paying. Once you've paid $1,000 toward your healthcare expenses, you've met the deductible that year and you won't have to pay any more deductible until next year. Note that if you have original Medicare, your part of deductible is per benefit period rather than per year. Co-payments are a fixed amount, usually much smaller than your deductible, that you pay each time you get a particular type of healthcare service. For example, you might have a $40 co-payment to see a doctor. This means each time you see the doctor, you pay $40 whether the doctor's bill is $60 or $600, your insurance company pays the rest. But keep in mind that the co-payment covered visit might also include services that count towards the deductible, which means you'll get a separate bill for those services. Coinsurance is a percentage of the bill you pay each time you get a particular type of healthcare service, it's not the same thing as a co-payment. Coinsurance applies after you've met your deductible but before you've met your out-of-pocket maximum. For example, let's say you have a $1,000 deductible that you've already paid for the year, an out-of-pocket maximum of $5,000, and a 30% coinsurance for inpatient hospitalization. Here are the 10 concepts that you need to know. 1. Out-of-pocket maximum, but what if your hospital bill is $100,000 instead? Does that mean you're on the hook for $30,000? No, because the out-of-pocket maximum will kick in after your share of the coinsurance bill gets to $4,000, since your out-of-pocket maximum is $5,000 in this example and you already paid your deductible, the $4,000 is the rest of your cost-sharing obligation, but in this example, your coinsurance responsibility could be lower than $4,000 if you had also been paying co-payments throughout the year. Once your total out-of-pocket costs for covered expenses reach the limit set by your plan, in this case, $5,000, your plan starts to pay 100% of the cost of covered care for the rest of the year. So, the out-of-pocket maximum is the point at which you can stop taking money out of your own pocket to pay for deductibles, co-payments, and coinsurance. Once you've paid enough toward deductibles, co-pays and coinsurance to equal your health plan's out-of-pocket maximum, your health insurer will begin to pay 100% of your covered healthcare expenses for the rest of the year. 2. Provider networks. Most health plans have healthcare service providers that have made a deal with the health plan to provide services at discounted rates. Together, these healthcare service providers are known as the health plan's provider network. A provider network includes not just doctors, 
but also hospitals, laboratories, physical therapy centers, x-ray and imaging facilities, home health companies, hospices, medical equipment companies, outpatient surgery centers, urgent care centers, pharmacies, and a myriad of other types of healthcare service providers. Healthcare providers are called in-network if they're part of your health plan's provider network and out-of-network if they're not part of your plan's provider network. Your health plan wants you to use in-network providers and provides incentives for you to do so. 3. Prior authorization. Most health plans won't allow you to get whatever healthcare services you wish, whenever and wherever you wish. One of the mechanisms health insurers use to accomplish this is a pre-authorization requirement, also referred to as prior authorization. If your health plan has one, it means you must get the health plan's permission before you get a particular type of healthcare service. If you don't get permission first, the health plan will refuse to pay and you'll be stuck with the bill. Although healthcare providers will usually take the lead role in getting services pre-authorized on your behalf, it's ultimately your responsibility to make sure anything that needs to be pre-authorized has been pre-authorized. After all, you're the one who ends up paying if this step is skipped, so the buck quite literally stops with you. 4. Claims. A health insurance claim is how health plans are notified about a healthcare bill. In most health plans, if you use an in-network provider, that provider will automatically send the claim to your health insurer. However, if you use an out-of-network provider, you may be the one responsible for filing the claim. Even if you don't think your health plan will pay anything toward a claim, you should file it anyway. For example, if you don't think your health plan will pay because you haven't met your deductible yet, you should file the claim so the money you're paying gets credited toward your deductible. If your health plan doesn't know you've spent $300 on treatment for a sprained ankle, it can't credit that $300 toward your deductible. 5. Premiums. The money you pay to buy health insurance is called the health insurance premium. You have to pay health insurance premiums every month or every pay period if your plan is obtained by your employer. If you don't pay your health insurance premiums by the end of the grace period, your health insurance coverage is likely to be cancelled. Sometimes you don't pay the entire monthly premium yourself. This is common when you get your health insurance through your job. A portion of the monthly premium is taken out of each of your paychecks, but your employer also pays a portion of the monthly premium. This is helpful since you're not shouldering the entire burden yourself, but it makes it more difficult to understand the true cost and value of your health insurance. 6. Open enrollment and special enrollment. You can't sign up for health insurance whenever you want. You're only allowed to sign up for health insurance at certain times. This is to prevent people from trying to save money by waiting until they're sick to buy health insurance. You can sign up for health insurance during the open enrollment period. Most employers have an open enrollment period once each year, commonly in the autumn. A special enrollment period is a brief time when you're allowed to sign up for health insurance even if it's not open enrollment. Special enrollment periods are usually triggered when you lose your existing health insurance or have a change in family size. For example, if you lose, or quit, your job and thus your job-based health insurance, that would trigger a special enrollment period, in both the individual market and for another employer-sponsored plan for which you're eligible, during which you can sign up for a health plan even though it's not open enrollment. 7. Medicaid is a social welfare program that provides comprehensive government-based health insurance to low-income people. Medicaid is free health insurance for those who qualify. In most cases, there are no monthly premiums, and there is no or minimal cost sharing in the form of deductibles or co-payments. In many states, adults under the age of 65 will qualify for Medicaid if their household income is no more than 138% of the federal poverty level. Pregnant women and children can generally qualify for Medicaid with household incomes well above that level, but people age 65 and older generally need to have lower incomes as well as low asset levels in order to qualify for Medicaid. Medicaid is paid for by federal and state taxes, and administered at the state level, which is why coverage and eligibility rules vary from one state to another. 
If you receive Medicaid, your friends, neighbors, and fellow citizens are paying for your health care with their tax dollars. Although Medicaid is government health insurance, the vast majority of care provided to Medicaid recipients is provided by private businesses and health care providers. 8. Affordable Care Act Subsidy The Affordable Care Act provides government subsidies to make buying health insurance less expensive for people with modest incomes, and to help make both buying and using health insurance less expensive for people with low incomes. In both cases, these subsidies are designed to help people who buy their own health insurance. Normally, there is an income cap of 400% of the poverty level in order to qualify for the premium tax credit, premium subsidy. But for 2021 and 2022, as part of the American Rescue Plan to address the ongoing COVID pandemic, there is no income limit on premium subsidy eligibility. 9. Short-term health insurance Short-term health insurance frequently costs less than comprehensive health insurance. For this reason, it's an attractive option to people looking for temporary coverage. Short-term plans can be sold in some states with terms of up to 364 days of coverage, and in some cases, these plans can be renewed for up to a total of 36 months. But some states do not allow short-term plans to be sold at all, and others place more restrictive limits on their duration. And even in states that don't limit short-term plans beyond the federal minimum requirements, insurers can choose to offer plans that are non-renewable or that have shorter durations. 10. Job-Based Health Plan Many employers in the United States subsidize health insurance for their employees and their employees' families as part of the employees' benefits and compensation package. This is very common for full-time employees of large companies. It's not as common for part-time employees or for employees of small businesses. Here's how it works. When you get a job that comes with health insurance benefits, your employer may offer only one health plan, or they might offer several options from which to choose. You have a limited period of time to sign up for the health insurance your employer offers. If you don't sign up before the deadline, you'll have to wait until the next annual open enrollment period. There's typically a short waiting period before your coverage begins. This is usually from 30 to 90 days. When you have employer-sponsored health insurance, your employer usually pays part of the monthly premiums and you pay part of the monthly premiums. In most cases, when you quit or lose your job, you also lose your job-based health insurance coverage. However, you may be eligible to continue this coverage for 18 months through COBRA or state continuation if you're willing to pay both your share of the premium and the part your employer had been paying. As promised, if you reach this part of there is always a bonus for you. 1. Spouse's Health Plan If your spouse has job-based health insurance, you may be eligible for the same coverage. Most employers extend the offer of job-based health insurance to their employees' spouses, children, and stepchildren. You'll also have an opportunity to join your spouse's plan if you experience a qualifying event, such as losing your own health plan or having a baby. This is known as the family glitch, and it leaves some families without a truly affordable health insurance option. If your spouse's employer offers health insurance to their family members, your share of the premium S will be deducted from your spouse's paycheck automatically. 2. Parents' Health Plan If you're less than 26 years old and your parent has an individual market plan, purchased on exchange or off exchange, or a grandmothered or grandfathered plan, or a job-based plan that offers coverage to dependents, you're eligible for coverage under your parents' health plan. This is true even if you're not your parents' tax dependent, you're married, or you're living on your own. You may have to wait until the next open enrollment period with your parents' health plan to be added to their health insurance coverage. Some employers subsidize not only their employees' health insurance but also health insurance coverage for employees' families. Other employers pay a portion of their employees' health insurance premiums but don't subsidize the premiums for family members. If your parents' employer doesn't subsidize family coverage, your entire monthly premium will be deducted from your parents' paycheck. Before exploring your options for free or low-cost health insurance, understand one thing, health insurance is never really free and is rarely truly low-cost, that's why it is important to understand them very well.
please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, see you on my next video, Ma Salama.